Yeah. Now, again, guys were asking, I mean, Sean's last film, Metro Manila, is one of my favourite films of this side of, of the millennium. And I was just wondering if you guys had seen that and how much of a bearing that plays when you're sort of choosing which projects to, to take. I had very recently seen it when uh, Anthropoid fell, in my, fell into my inbox. I'd seen literally like three weeks prior, I'd seen Metro Manila. And uh, I'm firmly in your camp. I think it's one of the best movies I've ever seen, actually. Uh, it blew me away. And um, so, I mean, he could have been making a film about anything and I would have wanted to be involved. So it just so happened he was making a movie about uh, a story that I find instantly gripping. Um, so it was, uh, I didn't have to think too much about it. And it, well, no, I mean, had you heard of this, this tale before? Because I, I hadn't. <coughs> and watching it reminded me that uh, there's so many kind of stories that derive from the sort of Second World War that I'm sort of still yet to hear. And I was just wondering if this was one that you, you had known about and if not, how much sort of research did you, did you go into as well? No, neither of us had heard about it. Um, and uh, I think you're right, the Second World War was such a massive, massive conflict happening on so many different continents and it was just crazy. And that the fact that there still are incidents in it that we probably don't know that well and certainly aren't taught in schools. And I think this this particular incident is not or had not been well known outside of the Czech Republic until, well, hopefully until this film comes out, you know. And um, yes, but the, people are fascinated with the Second World War. You know, it's, it's inevitable because I guess it is a very identifiable good and evil in it. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, I think it's going to be always mined for drama for that reason. Mm -hmm. But the, the real-life church that obviously plays a huge part in the, in the latter stages is still in Prague and it's sort of got the bullet holes in, in the wall and stuff. Did you guys visit that? And it must have been quite, quite haunting, I guess, when you, when you sort of walked in. Very much so. I mean, any exterior of the church that you see in our movie is the real exterior of, of the real church. And... Um, yeah, we went there a couple of times um, before we started filming, uh, and it just has a very heavy weight to it, that place. I mean, particularly given what we were about to embark on, you know, um, a very palpable sense of dread and um, and uh, terror, really. Um, I mean, this is where these guys actually, you know, had their final breaths, and, and it, it definitely weighs very heavy on you. Um, and when we made this beautiful incredible to scale set that we shot all the interior stuff and um it's hugely beneficial to to because it, it was almost identical to amazing and uh, in regards to, to the accents obviously you guys have to put on i mean if i'm watching a film and someone has to a, fo a foreigner has to put on an english accent so it, it's, it can often be quite a sort of standardized kind of generic accent but obviously being from England, you can tell the difference between a Geordie or someone who's from Liverpool. Um, so I was wondering how specific were your Czech accents? To, were they to a sort of particular region? Did you have a dialect coach that had to make sure it was a very specific kind of uh, accent in this regard? And same for the Slovakian one too. Uh, yes, is the answer. Yeah, I think that the, you know, we did have a dialect coach, a very good one, and we, um, you know, you have to just put in the time with accents. That's the the trick, really. But you know, the thing about the Czech accent is that it's quite light as compared to say a Russian accent or something like that. So hopefully in this film, it succeeds if the audience uh, just forgets about it quickly. That was our ambition, you know? I think it was helped by the fact that there's real, genuine Czech actors and they're speaking English. Uh, so, so hopefully we just sort of blend into the background accent-wise. <laughs> <laughs> and and Killian, I mean, you've got uh, sort of Dunkirk as well. It's not too far away. So far away. I mean, we've seen this incredible teaser trailer so far. It's all we've, we've, we've witnessed. Um, I'm it. oh, it's really good. <laughs> all sort of it, ten I've seconds. Seen it, I've seen it. <laughs> and um, I was just wondering. Uh, wait, wait, now, this is obviously sort of two sort of war movies in, in a row. I was just wondering when you perform in a, in a film that's set in, in this sort of time, do you? feel that you get a sort of slightly better understanding of what it might have been like to have been around in that time? Or do you think it's just impossible to ever really kind of comprehend? Well, first of all, you know, the, you know, I made a couple of science fiction films a few years ago that came out one after, and people go, oh, it's, it's science fiction, that's your thing. So, you know, it's, it's just not, it's, a, it's random. It's totally just by coincidence. And uh, this, I had no idea that Christopher Nolan would be making this film after I made this film. Uh, anthropoid. So, and and to answer your question, you know, in terms of do you, you get to understand it more? I think the answer is no. I think actors, we 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 are st sort of students of history for like the four weeks before the film, and the you know the six weeks or eight weeks or ten weeks of the film, 
and you absorb and absorb as much as you can, but we're sort of on a very superficial level, really. And I would, I think it would be very indulgent of us as actors to say, well, you, I kind of understand what it felt like. <laughs> no, these, there was a real people and they, they lived and, and they died and we cannot even begin to imagine the horrors of it, you know. So, no, we're just trying to portray it as on, honestly as possible. And just very quickly, uh, Jamie, of course, uh, talking future projects, obviously Fifty Shades Darker is another one which a lot of people are immensely um, excited about. I was just wondering, now you've kind of made the, the first film and the sort of second one's on its way, have you quite gotten, gotten used to this kind of being attached to a character that so many people have got so many kind of preconceptions about and are so I'm sort of fond of, I guess? Yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, the thing about that is that everyone, because so many people... Uh, have preconceived ideas of who he is and who he should have been, <laughs> and many of them not too pleased it was me. Um, but that's fine, and that sort of goes with the territory, and, and um, you, I, you can't let that overburden you, whatever, you know. Um, you've just got to sort of get on with it, and, and, you know, there's a reason you're there, there's a reason you're in that position, the studio's picked you, whatever it is, and... And then you've just got to embrace it, and you know. And we've done two movies back to back now, and, and I'm I'm actually finished with it. I've done uh, Fifty Shades forever, so it's um, it's kind of a weird thing. I I'm, I move on very fast in my mind, you know. Um, as much as, I guess from the outside, people think you're you know, synonymous with one character, and that's fine. But I'm very much right. That's done. I move on to the next project and worry about that character, you know. Thanks so much for your time today. Much appreciated. Thanks, so much. Thanks, Thank man. You. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, yeah. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!